bit about what foot, he sits there going, whoops, and someone's run around him and scored. If you want to get technical with it, okay, this is a theory. Craig's coming at me, and he's coming with a lot of speed. If I have same leg, same shoulder, and Craig comes at me, push me over, Craig. Push me over. Push me over. I'm really anchored because all my weight is in a straight line and I can sink through my front leg. If I come at Craig's over speed, I might want to get that foot planted and then go through him to drive him sideways, and that would be my big shot. And we know Gilly was very good at those. So that leg coming through is great if you've got the momentum, but in that, you're going to hit, and usually you end up twisting to just take them slightly off their line. Please though, if you can see where I'm coming with it and breaking it down, both techniques are fine. It's more important for them to get their feet in close and to make good contact than for a kid to be worrying about, oops, which one? I, I can give you out today ideas, but it's games to me that are really important. This one, Siamese twins. Siamese twins, we're back in my pummeling position. Craig's allowed to escape from me. I'm Siamese, I'm born attached to him. Stuck on you, I think it's the movie. Okay, Craig, get away from me. Rodeo or cowboy stuff, you can make up a game and call it, what's rodeo, 10 seconds, they've got to stay on? 15 seconds, 8 seconds? So you just pair them up and they've got to hold on to them for 8 seconds. Kids love it, they're trying to rip and throw each other and trying to hold on for dear life. What am I teaching them though? Keep the eyes, keep the head in, keep the yeah. Head on. That's the main one. If they can get their head in tight, they're safe and they get so much more control out. So wherever you can do tackling drills, where you hit, but finish in a soft landing. It's always really good for kids confidence wise. So for example, I do the T-tackle, off, and there's their little creek. They can come in, whack, drive and lift, and splash landing. So for young kids, they love that because then they don't have to hit the ground. A game though that I think will help you, if you want to encourage footwork going into a tackle, behind the knee tag, yet, to have them in full contact or worried about injury. If I make it behind the knee tag, step to a side for me, tag, I've tagged him behind the knee. If you look at the position I get myself in to make the tag, it's got to be outside hand, same step again, I've tagged him behind the knee. I've put him on a shoulder, I've got my head down, I've bent my legs, and I finish in this position. If I want to make a tackle, I just then put my other hand on him and push up through my legs and it becomes a tackle. So the idea of that though is that if they lack total confidence because they're really tall, rangy, um, a little bit gangly as teenagers get and they're uncomfortable coming in and putting themselves in position to make a tackle, then just play a game regularly at the end of a session, take behind the knee and they'll get better at getting themselves into that position and then when you think they're good enough, make a tackle, see how they go. First south. One of the real hard things is when you have big kids, uh, happens a lot now with Polynesians playing against other kids because of the maturity levels and development, yeah. that they can just stand there, a little kid comes at them and they just go, get away. Okay? Our kid is brave enough, probably has good technique to make a tackle if he could get close enough, <coughs> but just due to physical size and strength, they're not allowed to get in. Adrian talks to you all the time about hands up, targets up, use different words. That's attack. <coughs> Let's try and meld it together. Attack and defense have the same principles. We're going to play a game where we both have our hands up on the ball. There's a line there with kids going that way, kids here with me. A little bit of space between them, maybe a metre. You're south, I'm north. Okay, the coach stands there, the coach calls north. North then has the time to rip the ball because it's theirs, and I'm going to try and get round him in like this space of half a metre either side, by putting a fend on. If we can teach him the habit though, don't let your hands drop, leave your hands up. As I come to put the fend on, just like boxing perfect, push down and whack. The way it works is this, okay? I'm going to say south. Yep. South, good. I go through his fend. Something that happens when he fends, we'll go in slow motion, put the fend on. As he's come there, my hands have stayed up, I push down, what happens to his shoulder? Drop. It drops into me, which gives me the opportunity to go through him. 
Okay? I'm actually making him hurt himself because he's falling into my tackle. So the game's just like this. North. Good. That's all right. You had the right because you had that hand on. You just had to force me down a bit more and come through. Kids love it though because it's competition. Yeah? Bang, I got you with the fan. Or bang, you knocked it down and you drive me backwards. Okay? So competition wise, it's an easy way to keep the fence nice and fun. North, south. Lift off tackle, all I do is take your pads or your shields, you put it on the ground, the guy comes at you, I tackle him, I lift, and I have to place him down on a pad. So instead of them just coming in with big contact and the kid bounces off, they need to be in good position, head tight, and control all the way to the ground. If they can do that, they'll never spear anyone. They'll just learn the idea of driving. I'll just use pummeling because it's something we've done before. So we're going to do two pump balls. One, two. Now it's going to be a takedown. I'm going to get underneath him. I'm going to try and break his balance. Because we're not going to down. Okay, I'm going to finish still on my toes. Because when I get to the elite level of the game, if you end up on your knees, then you're slow. And there's no way you can get up and get to my in time. I stay on my toes though, and I have total control to jump straight up. If you can keep anchor points underneath, you got control of the tackle. As soon as you go flat onto knees, if he's smart, he rolls out the side, and he's playing the ball while you're still on the ground. Tackle, if they're good, shot under the ball because the ball pop. Most people know that. Most people, though, tend to tackle on the ball or above. So I hit Mao, lead control for me, grab that tricep, and jam it up. So I'm keeping him from moving the ball. Next thing I can do, I can twist him. If I had a second tackler come in, that's payday. There's rib cage. there's a lot of open body right there yeah. for you to get in and, and do some damage. You can do, and this one, I don't want you to confuse the kids, but a little kid on a big kid sometimes gets into this tackle position here. The big kid's bigger than him, stronger, and it's really hard to get him down. Mal's just standing there all day wanting to offload the ball. Elbows and knees are the rule. So I've hit with my left shoulder, but I grab with my right hand. Knees are good, Mal? Yep. Good. I'm going to pull my right elbow down towards my knee and break him through the middle. And you'd be surprised, but doesn't it just feel like your leg collapses? Yeah, not from there. Because as soon as you're in that point, they pull you back over your centre of gravity and you fall over. Okay? So little kids, when they've got a bike that's stand there doing this all day, they don't know how to get them down. You just teach them elbow to my knee. As I pull, it breaks his balance through the middle. Jump out and get round. The bike has to cut him down. He then stands up. This guy's playing the ball. This one goes to dummy half. He tries to jump out and go around him. Got to tackle legs again from the other side. Side on tackle, leg tackle, one of the fundamentals for him. But you can teach it in more of a game situation where someone's moving with speed, someone's maybe putting a fend out the back, at least they're having to make a real tackle. Is there only three in the box here? Yep, only three in the box. How big's the box? Oh. Four metres by four by five. The rope drill is a simple one. We <coughs> have four people with that. Maybe I have a skipping rope, or I could use a broomstick. I hold one end, they hold the other. One person's on this side, holding the ball. And Mao was there on the other side, two steps away. He runs at the rope. Rope's about my head height, runs at the rope, dips under the rope, and comes up to make his tackle. He's thinking about dipping, he's going to have his hands up, because we've done the north to south game. That helps him go down and load, and they get used to that sensation of going at a person, running, and at the last minute, dipping and surging into him. Okay. It's easy, they learn real quick, because they don't want to butt heads with a broomstick. So it makes life easy for you. If you just do a normal drill, dip, 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 they don't do it. Put something there so they can see it and they'll physically go on the man. There, man on man tackle. Um, if you have nine versus nine and you have some really big and strong kids versus little kids, put your big strong kids on opposite sides, tackle each other. That way you can have your little kids working on little kids, big kids on big kids, save your injuries, and everyone still gets to play in the contact field instead of having someone sitting out on the wing because they don't want to make any tackles at all. Beat me. I, I continue along the idea that um, attacking drills can become defensive drills. 
So I usually, same as Adrian was talking about before, I think unders and overs is everything in terms of attack. I would normally have it, so this person has the ball, you have lines down the other end. Someone has to nominate, okay? They come out, this is the attack <coughs> drill. So this person then goes on square, this person holds and then cuts. And this person comes out to defend against. And that's the attacking drill, so they've practiced that, they've used that a bit. We use the same setup then and we work on defense. Except now it's reversed. This one person goes forward with the ball. This person goes into the contact zone. This person comes in to assist because they're twisting them out. If this person's strong, maybe they can offload a ball out the back. 